Welcome back to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. I'm Dennis Phillips, and today we're going to talk about annealing brass and actually anneal some. The reason we do that is it extends the life of your brass. When you're reloading, you run your brass through a resizing die, which squeezes and pushes that brass back to its original dimension the way it was when it first came from the factory. Because when it's fired, the pressure on the inside of that brass causes that brass to expand. And of course, the neck also expands. And if you were to try to reload that brass without resizing it first, the bullet would just fall right in there because the case mouth is too large to hold the bullet securely. So we have to resize that and squeeze that back down to its original factory dimensions. Now, with any kind of metal, what happens is over time, the more that metal is worked, the more it's likely to disintegrate. So for example, I take this piece of brass and I work it back and forth and you work that enough times and eventually that will break. Well, the same thing is true when you're working with brass and you're resizing it in your sizing dies. Because what happens is when you resize that brass, you squeeze it back down to its original factory specifications and you're working that brass. Not as much as I was working that piece that I just tossed out, but you're forcing that brass, you're changing its dimensions with pressure. And so what happens is when you anneal a piece of brass, you're only going to place heat from the shoulder to the neck. And you'll see how I do that here in just a few minutes. But basically what you want to do is you want to put that in a drill and spin it in that drill and put it on a torch just until that tip glows red. And once that tip glows red, then you remove it because you're only resizing the shoulder and the neck in the press. So you want this part, the case, to remain hard, but you want the shoulder and the mouth of the brass soft so that when you resize it, it doesn't damage it like bending that piece of hard metal. Okay, so by annealing, we're softening the brass in the area of the case neck, the case mouth, and the shoulder, because that's where we make our changes when we put it through the sizing die. So let's go anneal some, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so now we're ready to anneal. We've got just an ordinary plumber's torch set up here. Got the blue flame. A little about an inch long three quarters of an inch we have a just an ordinary drill for a 223 brass I'm using a 3 8 size socket you just insert the case into the socket and you want to point the flame to the shoulder of the brass and you're going to heat this up just until the case neck begins to glow red so you pull the trigger on the drill, you get it spinning. That case turns red, or the neck turns red, and you drop it out. Some people, when they're annealing, they'll drop their case into a bucket of water. I'm dropping mine into a little metal pan. Saves me the trouble of having to dry it out before I can tumble it, clean it. It can be done either way. I don't think there's really a difference one way or the other. But again, spin it just until it turns, the net turns red or just starts to glow. And as soon as that case neck begins to glow red, you're gonna go ahead and drop it out. Usually takes five or six seconds. If the flame's hotter, it might go a little quicker. But you also want to conserve your fuel. And you'll also notice a change in the appearance of the brass 
once it's annealed. You'll see how the neck is slightly discolored. And you don't want to do the entire length of the brass because this part, the body of the brass, you want that to remain hard. The part that you're going to be working is going to be the shoulder and the neck. So that's the part that we want to anneal to soften that brass. So I've got about a hundred of these to do. So I'm going to take care of this and then we'll come back and then we'll clean the brass. <laughs> 